to the SOAP Bible Study video series from Oak Tree Community Church in South Bend, Indiana. We are starting a two-week, two-week yep. series through a whole book. It's short and sweet. Better be a short book. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, but as we were talking about, man, it's a good book. It's packed. Yeah. We're not going to tell anybody what it is, but yeah, this is, right. no, this is, <laughs> we're going to be in the short uh, New Testament book of Colossians for the next yeah. couple of weeks. It's only four chapters. Right. So it's, you know, from a reading plan standpoint, it it's like hard. Three to weeks would have been tough. Yeah, you know, yeah. because now we're reading like five verses a day. Yeah. And, right. you know, you start chopping it up too much and, and you lose continuity. Yeah. Right. So you don't want to rush through it. But at the same time, <clears throat> you don't want to drag it out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it is it is a way cool book, though. And and one of the things I like about doing the soap videos is I have to read it beforehand. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> at least have, at least I have to try to carry my part of the conversation. What? We're supposed to prepare for this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've read it before. Uh, but um, I see it in a new light, which is way cool. Yeah. Um, so Colossians is one of the four what they call the prison epistles. Yep. Um, so Paul was actually in Rome under house arrest. Uh, first time he was arrested, right? Uh, the, well, well, first maybe time not Rome. first time for Rome. <laughs> yeah, first time in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> this is when he appealed to Caesar. Yep. Uh, they took him to Rome. Uh, he was there awaiting trial, and nobody was going to come right. to uh, to accuse him of anything, right? Because <laughs> because under it Roman the law, Sadducees. <laughs> yeah, under under Roman law, they could hold somebody for two years, yeah. And if your accusers didn't show up, then they would have to let you, you must go. Must be free, yeah. So they just took him off the street for two yeah, years. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Or they thought they did. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So Paul spent the time under house arrest, uh, which he seemed to have a lot of liberties that maybe not everybody else had. Yep. And he certainly had a lot of visitors. Yeah. Uh, Acts we've seen 28. chapter four, a bunch of them. Yeah. Too. Acts 28 is where we see what's like going on. The end of Acts 28. Um, he re yeah. he was lived in his own rented quarters for two years and he had a lot of visitors like what you were saying. Yeah. Right. So, sorry, I interrupted, no, 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 but that's, that, that's just to give the connection in Acts of what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, so Ephesians, Philippians, Philemon, yeah. and uh, and Colossians are the were the prison ep epistles, which are really letters to yeah. towns. Yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, so with this, Paul didn't actually start the church here. So it's like, why is he writing him a letter? Uh, <laughs> but I, I was thinking, you know, this has got to be the only one that, that he did this with, but I think Rome was also one. Yeah, right? he wrote to Rome before. Yeah, and he didn't start that church there. In right. fact, he said, you know, you know, something along the lines, I want to go beyond and yeah, I'm, know, start my own yep, start I'm, my own church. I'm there. headed to Spain, yeah. yeah. Those are the only two I could think of. Uh, I give him yep. a little task. <laughs> keep him yes. occupied. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So he did Corinth, uh, the the churches in Galatia. He did Ephesus. He did right. Philippi. He did Thessalonica. Philemon is a personal letter, actually, right. to a guy here in Colossae. Uh, right. Uh, Timothy, a personal a, letters. Titus yeah. is a personal letter. All right. All right. Good. Good. Um, so. What else about this? Uh, there, there's a tie-in between Ephesians and Colossians. Yeah. First, they're not too far away, right? About 100 miles away from each other. Yeah, geographically, which, yeah. they're not far. And, and we're in Turkey here, and some of these places that are real close to it show up in the book of Revelation, too, yep. uh, for the seven letters. Yeah, so you've got, so Colossae was one of, uh, sort of like a trio. There was like a, yeah. a triangle of three cities, Colossae, Hierapolis, which is mentioned in chapter four, yep. and a little place we've heard of called Laodicea, right. and that's where the that's revelation, the revelation we do see that in chapter four here as well. And uh, it's interesting that, of course, uh, Ephesus to Laodicea has those seven churches, and it was a, a regular trade route. Yeah. And if you follow the seven letters in <laughs> Revelation two and three, you actually follow actually, the route. Right that they would have naturally gone. Yeah. So somebody could have had those letters and just sort of dropped them yeah, off. Here's one for you, here's one for you. you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but you said that Colossae, or Colossae, Paul did not start this church. Right. So. How, how did it start, How right? did it start, yeah. yeah. You tell the story. Uh, you know. <laughs> guy by the name of Epaphras um, 
Paul says, you learned in, in chapter 1, verse yeah. 7, you learned the gospel from Epaphras. Uh, that's pretty cool. You know, Paul calls right. him out. But where did Epaphras learn it? Right. That's the question. Right. Some people think that when Paul was in Ephesus for two, three years, that maybe because they were so geographically close, Epaphras maybe heard Paul there. Maybe he heard the gospel there, was saved, and he brought he it brought back, back to his hometown, yep. and he became the evangelist there started the church and you know maybe you went back and forth right. you know right. a lot of this is speculation yeah but it does make sense because uh, why would paul write this letter yeah. there has to be some tie some kind that, of connection that got him that got him to go yep uh and the other interesting thing with the ephesus connection is um the stories are similar. The books are similar. The letters are similar to each other. Which I mean, not would, exact, right? But, but you would expect if he's writing them around the same about time. the same time, yep. you know, to two different places, right? Which are geographically close to each other. And I think the big difference that people always note is Ephesus is more about the body of Christ, and we'll find here in Colossians more about the head. Yeah, Christ. yeah. So you've I mean, got the body this, is in there, but yeah, you've got this head body too. thing in both letters. Yeah. And but what's the emphasis? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and Colossians we we see it's the supremacy of Christ. It's Christ is yeah. the head of the body is the emphasis. Ephesians is the body of the head is is the emphasis. What's interesting is that in chapter four he refers to a letter in Laodicea, and he says make sure that uh, Laodicea gets this letter and you get the letter from them so that yeah, you read them both. It. You know, swap. Some people think that that is Ephesians. Oh, okay. And if yeah. you start in Ephesus and maybe because the, the the book of Ephesians doesn't seem to be very personal. It, it's very impersonal, in fact, especially yeah. for a guy who spent three years there. No names at all. Right. So some people think that the letter of Ephesians actually just started in Ephesus, followed that same route, landed in Laodicea. And, and, then, and then. Yep. Yeah. So this one, definitely a lot of names in it. Right. Uh, and chapter four yeah which is odd from the standpoint paul's never been there right but, but a lot of the names uh, we'll find out are actually people who are with him with him sending or, their greetings yeah. whereas romans for instance he's greeting a lot of people there yeah even though he's never been there right which is way cool. which is very cool yeah. yeah right all right so one of the first things in chapter one paul lets him know hey i know about you yeah and I've heard about you, and I know what's going on there, and I've been praying for you. And how cool would that be, right? I mean, we're not a huge church here. So, you know, if we got a letter from an apostle, it'd be like, whoa. If we got a letter from an apostle, we'd start yeah, well, wondering. <laughs> different <laughs> but, thing, yeah. but you know what I'm saying. Work with me here. <laughs> I mean, how cool would that have been, right? Yeah. I mean, the gospel is growing in the, in the whole world. This little town, uh, you know, I grew up in a small town. This little town is growing in, in Christianity, and yes, it definitely has problems. But, man, you know, what a, what a great trend here. Yeah. His prayer, if you've never done a study on Paul's prayers or read through Paul's prayers that he, that he has in his books or letters, uh, it's really worth the read. Yeah. And this one in verses 3 through 8 is just really cool. be a good sermon series. For it you. would be. I've thought Let's about write it. write that someplace. <laughs> <laughs> write that down someplace. <laughs> All right. So uh, go, going through there, Paul wants them to continue on their path. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wants them to continue bearing fruit and continue growing in the knowledge of God. You know, excellent, right? A lot of times the letters aren't so nice. And, yeah. And so it's good having a, good having a nice letter there. Yeah. Um, let's see, one of the word in verse 13, I got tripped up a little bit. Uh, there's, a, there's a word in there transferred that, that I got a little bit stuck on, but it's talking about um, you know, we were all under Satan and we were transferred over to, over to Christ. Yeah. There's a, there's this great picture of, of, of almost like a search and rescue mission, which is what Jesus said he came to do anyway, seeking to save those who are lost. And it says that God tr rescued us from the power of darkness. Right. And transferred us into the kingdom of, of, of his love, beloved son, the son nice. whom he loves. And so there's this, there's this like supernatural feel to it's not just okay i was saved no there's there's some behind the scenes stuff going on right that is really cool right 
uh, it seems that the church uh, where they were at had some issues there. Yeah. Um, there was uh, angel worshiping going on. Uh, there was Judaism influence um, and other other influences too, and they seem to be using a melting pot and kind of adding them all together. Yeah. And Christianity was getting a little bit lost there, yeah. and and it seems to me that the the leaders or or the Christians there needed help. Yeah. And, and that seems to be the purpose of Paul's Paul's letter. Or well, the purpose. and and since he had never been there, since he hadn't started the church. Everything that they had was, in a sense, secondhand. Yeah, hearsay. Yeah. Right? So, hey, I was over in Ephesus, you know, potentially, right? I was over in Ephesus and Paul taught this class on this. Now I'm going to teach yeah. you. Wait, he said... Um... <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I think that's how he put it. <laughs> right. Let me check my notes again. <laughs> right. Oh, that was Yeah, smudged. I mean, that's what happened. Yeah. So right. they hadn't had any apostolic like teaching yet. And so he had to right. straighten some things. But... Like you said, he did it nicely. It wasn't like he's, you know, it's not like Galatians where he's excoriating right. them. Right. But it's different where where he was there and taught and left, and now they're not following it. Exactly. Versus <laughs> versus um, this, yeah, where guys. they're yeah. doing the best they can with what they have. Yeah. So so one of the things Paul does, uh, one verse fifteen of the first chapter, is he talks about the um, supremacy of Christ. Yeah, it's a great passage. Yeah, exactly. And there's about five verses where he's listing out the characteristics of Christ, and it seems to be uh, directly for their benefit that they can use to for all these false teachers that are saying, no, our God is you know yep. this mishmash. No, nope. let me tell you about my God. Yeah, yeah. And it's really important, and, and we'll see this in later chapters as well, that there is an insistence that Paul has on correct doctrine. Because instead of just jumping into, let's fix some problems, he always starts with teaching. Here's what we have to know. Now we can fix the problems that we have. Right. You know, without, without <clears throat> what I've said for a long time is without right learning, we can't do right living. Right. You know, you got to have the healthy doctrine. You've got to have the sound doctrine. That's why many of Paul's letters start with the doctrinal side and then move to the practical side instead of the other way around, which we tend to like the practical side. Oh, just tell me what to do. No, I'm going to tell you yeah. why That's first. <laughs> I have to right. learn. Yeah. I have to sit in class yeah, first. Exactly. You know, yeah. well, that's what yeah. it is. Right. Right. Um, so I want to talk about verse 15 in here uh, because... You know, we're talking about, you know, yes, this church had issues, but there's issues in the church today. Not our church, of course. But, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, over over verse 15, um, well, how, how about you just talk about it? Well, verses 15 through 20 is a, is a major doctrinal thing for the Jehovah Witnesses. And it, it starts in verse 15 because it says that he is the firstborn overall creation right well in jehovah witness doctrine in jehovah witness theology god jehovah jehovah created jesus first right. over all creation and that's what that's what it says that's right? what it first sounds born. like it says yeah. right that's a good way to put it <laughs> <laughs> and then they look at the rest of the bible and say then jesus created everything else hebrews clearly tells us jesus is the right. creator uh, john clearly tells us yeah. jesus is the creator so but Jesus can't create anything if he doesn't exist, and Jehovah Witness theology does not believe Jesus is God. He is not Jehovah. Right. Okay? Right. So he has to be born. So, so he how has do we do to that? be created right. first. So how do they fix our Bible? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's what, what they do, it's really interesting. And I have my copy of, of the, uh, uh, the New World Translation here which is the, the Jehovah Witness Bible. And this is an older copy, but I checked online with the, the latest right. edition of it, and it says the same thing. So I'm just going to read it. I, I probably should read it off of my other <laughs> screen to actually <laughs> come to think of it. Um, what they do is a handful of times, about four or five times, they insert the word other into the text Right. In this passage, because they, in their theology, they can't allow uh, Jesus to be outside of the creation. He has to be inside the creation and yet above the other creation. So what, literally what their Bible says is, um, 
verse 16, because by means of him all other things were created. Not all things. Right, because he was created. Because he yeah. was created, all right. other things. Um, verse uh, At the end of verse 16, all other things have been created through him and for him. Verse 17, he is before all other things, and by means of him all other things were made to us. And they do this about a half a dozen times. Right. They insert this word that does not belong there. They've changed the scriptures to fit their theology. Right. And the reason is because of their understanding of the firstborn overall creation. Right. So we need to tackle that one too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the, the Greek word is prototokos. And it, if you think of firstborn as, um, there, there's two ways to look at it. Firstborn as the first, the way they're looking at it, the first one created, followed by other things created. Right. But that's not the way it is often used. Right. Okay. Like more like first of that type. First, yeah. There's, there's, it's a, it's a preeminence. He is above all creation. Okay. And if you don't put the word other in there, he is above all creation, not just above all other creation. Okay, and and the the point, in fact, what ends up happening is if you put other in here, it diminishes Christ instead of elevates him, exalts him, which is what Paul is trying to do. He's trying to exalt Christ, and what the Jehovah Witness theology yeah, does is it to. diminishes him, which it has to do in their theology because he is not God. Right. So. Um, we, they, they, I mean, he just they just do this all the way through this passage, right? So, how about those other? How about John and uh, Hebrews? Do they doing the same thing there? They, well, or not to the degree. Not to the degree. In John one one, for instance, it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God." They insert the word a, uh, okay. and then they put a lowercase g, and say he is not Jehovah, he is not God, he is sort of a demigod almost okay. where he's above everything else but he's not not um uh he's not god in in hebrews hebrews they don't really tend to have a problem because he's just the image of god which yeah, is what it says here image. you know the image of the right. invisible god so that they, they don't have a problem with him being the image of god as long as he's not god yeah. and so we we do see that in in hebrews here while you're looking that up, when I first read that, you know, the image of the invisible God, it's like, what does that look like? That's yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Kind of made me stop for a minute there. <laughs> so Hebrews 1.3, he's the reflection of his glory and the exact representation of his very being. And he sustains all things by his, the word of his power and goes down. No problem. As long as it doesn't say he is God, they're okay with it. Yeah. So we believe kind of like the Pharisees. <laughs> we believe that he is the preeminent one, that that this is actually exalting his deity. They're downplaying it, or they're eliminating it. Actually, right. he can't be. Right. Uh, in in Jehovah Witness theology, Jesus and Satan are sort of like uh, it's a dualistic system, right. sort the of like the the, the, the yin, yin and yang, yeah. the yin and yang, the good and evil, the dark and the light. They sort of, they, they can't exist without each other, in a sense. And so, uh, again, that's, you know, Satan is a created being. He's, you know, highest angel, whatever, but he was a created being, and Jesus was the one who created him. Yeah. Right. So, um, like we said, great set of verses here. We're spending some time on. And then almost, uh, not almost, I think right after that, Paul goes into his goals for ministry. You yeah. know, here's what I'm trying to accomplish. Here's what I am trying to do in my life. And I, I think he was trying to inspire the Christian teachers of the time with his goals. Yeah. Uh, you know, trying to shore them up. Hey, you, you know, false teachers are all over the place. They're, they're really bombarding you. You know, here, here's what I find helped. And this is why instruction is so important. Because yeah. how do you combat false teaching if you don't have <clears throat> yeah. right teaching? Right. Verse 28 has been a life verse of mine for a long time. We proclaim him uh, by instructing and teaching all people with all wisdom so that we can present every person mature in Christ. 
That's his goal. How are we supposed to, how are supposed people supposed to become mature? Instruction. You've got to have instruction. Knowledge. Yeah, we see the same thing in Ephesians 4. So that we're not children tossed about by every wind of doctrine and the craftiness of humankind. Right. You know, same thing that he says here in chapter 2 about being taken a captive by human philosophy. So we're seeing yeah. some of those overlaps between yep. Ephesians and Colossians. Yeah, yeah. good. Uh, then in, in chapter 2, uh, he's warning against, you know, a, a, the adoption of the false uh, philosophies. Yeah. Um, and he says, you know, just as we have received Christ, continue to live our lives in him. Yep. I thought that was an awesome, awesome verse. And, you know, he, just don't let others deceive you. Okay. Yeah. Easier said than done, <laughs> um, obvi obviously. Uh, but the interesting thing there was, um, you know, these people were spoke eloquently uh not positive what they were in it for whether it was money or fame yeah. or, or whatever but they were talking themselves up and paul's like you need to really listen to what they say because they're really not saying anything right yeah yep and but they're but they're deceptive you know, yeah they're, exactly you know, they're very well, they're good words nice words yeah. you gotta figure speed. they're well dressed yep and well groomed yep. orators i love in in uh 119 and 29 which sort of helps to make it easy to remember. One nineteen and two nine. Twice he talks about uh, the fullness of God is in Christ. In chapter in one nineteen he says God was pleased to have all His fullness dwell in the Son. How do you get away from the Son not the Son being God, right? Yeah. All the fullness in the yeah. Son, and then in two nine he says it again. In Him all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form. Everything that God is was right there in Jesus. Yeah. So why are we going away from Jesus? <laughs> right. uh, and then, then that's his, uh, you know, that, that sets up his doctrine. And, you know, this is how you're going to escape false teaching. Right. When you focus on Christ, you can escape false teaching, right. basically. Um, so, so that's it. Um, for, from a reading standpoint, yeah. it cuts off a little abrupt, but but like you said, there's there's never a gr great place to go. Yeah, and uh, so we're a little short this week, but don't worry, we'll make it up next. Week. <laughs> well, we'll <laughs> pick up here. Next yeah, week. yeah, we'll pick up here. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff in these first uh, chapter and a half. Uh, so you know, you know, yeah, we're reading through it in a week, but read through it carefully. And make sure that uh, as questions come up, you write them down, you email, text them, whatever. We'd love to answer your questions. Um, you can't talk about this too much because this is some really good stuff. And uh, use the instruction that you have available to you. Grow in your Christ-likeness. Grow in your maturity. And that was Paul's goal for writing this letter. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back and pick up in chapter 2, verse 16 next time. All right, great. Sounds good. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye.